All right, folks. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how I built this one-to-one -one choke ballon. I know people are going to get upset because I called it a choke ballon. So you can call it a ballon if that's what you like. You can call it a choke if that's what you like. I think the right terms choke ballon. Anyhow, this is a one-to-one -one choke that I will be using at the feed point of a doublet antenna that's going to use twin line or ladder line. And what this should do is should choke out any common mode currents that I'm seeing. It's in a one-to-one -one configuration. And I'm pretty happy with it. So stay tuned and I'll show you how I built it. Bring your electronic innovations to life with PCBWay.com. Offering top-notch PCB manufacturing and assembly services, PCBWay combines quality, speed, and affordability. With fast turnaround times, reliable worldwide shipping, and expert support, we're your trusted partner from prototype to production. Experience the unmatched value PCBWay provides and make your ideas a reality. Visit PCBWay.com today. All right, folks, so we're going to start the build. And the first thing is, is that I have this box and you can see it's got a little bit of give to it. So it's made out of a soft plastic. It's a junction box and it's meant to be outside, to my understanding. This is the lid and I like these lids. They have these uh, plastic screws and then you can see that these screws are keyed to fit in here a certain way. And you just screw them down and it has this waterproof gasket on here which should keep everything nice and tight in there let's take a look at some of the parts that we're going to be using uh, originally i originally was thinking about using these as mount posts for um i'm going to use this for a doublet antenna that i'm building this will be part of that video series uh, for connecting the positive and negative leads to this um, but i decided not to <clears throat> and we're going to go with something different i'll show you that Here's our SO239 connector, and I want to mount this on this box. And so that's probably going to be the first thing that we're going to do. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can wind chokes and uh, set up your chokes. And so what we have here is an FT240. That means it's 2.4 inches in diameter, and it's a mix 31, which is the generally accepted, agreed upon ferrite mix for broadband chokes. And that's what we're using here. The antenna that I'm building, I'm going to use this on, is designed to operate from 40 to 6. It's probably going to be 40 to 10. I'm hoping to get 6. And I've featured this choke in a number of videos, and I'll link some of those below so you can check them out testing it. So I know the choke works well. What we have here is dual bifiler windings. Uh, that means it's two wires wrapped around, and then we have another two wires wrapped around. And there are 12 turns on here. The wire is PTFE coded, 18 strand. Um, copper uh strand of copper wire that actually has a silver uh coating on it if i remember correctly it's made by a company called remington it's really nice wire super slippery though because it's a ptfe coating and each side of this is 50 ohms this is really a 100 ohm transformer but because we're splitting our signal if you think about two resistors in parallel for example it's half the resistance so it, it turns out to be 50 ohm so it should be invisible from an SWR standpoint, but it would choke any common mode current, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Um, let's take a quick look at this box. And you can see the box has a couple of mount points on there. So my good friend Chuck KK6USY designed this. I 3D printed it in ASA. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mount it on there like that. And we're gonna use these screws or bolts or whatever you wanna call them. I don't know what size they are, I'm sorry. And uh, so that means I'm going to want to put this SO239 here on the bottom. Then uh, what we're going to want to do is we're going to zip tie this to this to this platform that we're going to put in here. We're going to connect these shorter legs here to the SO239 connector. And then these longer legs are going to come up and they're going to connect to these quarter 20 bolts that I've got here with wing nuts. So we're going to mount the feed line from the antenna to these and I'll have to mark them positive and negative even though it really doesn't matter that much um, then I've got a bunch of these and I'm not sure which ones we're going to use these eye bolts or these I'm sorry these ring terminals um, this is one that would fit on here so we'll probably use those uh, for that uh, maybe for the inside for example these would go on like that and then just connect to the inside of these bolts I think is that that's going to be the plan there and then for the shield side of our of our choke, I'm going to use a smaller bolt to mount to the ground here on this uh, on this platform. So I'm probably going to have to use something a little smaller, maybe that one. Maybe I'll have to dig around in the parts box. Now, folks might say, hey, Ape, why are you using this particular choke, this particular design, or this particular winding? 
and it's not what I was originally going to use. I was going to use 11 turns of coaxial cable, probably RG8X on here and put it in there. But when I looked in the parts box, this is what I had. So let's take a quick look at this box. And what I want to do is I want to take something. I'm going to just use this scale. And I'm going to hold it tight against this lip here. And then I'm going to take this pencil that's missing an eraser. And I'm just going to draw a line all the way across. And then what I want to do is I want to find the center point. And I'm going to put a little line right around there, somewhere here in the middle. And then we're just going to go ahead and drill that in. So I'm going to go do that. I'm going to come back and show you once we have the SO239 mounted. And I forgot, for drilling the holes uh, for the SO239, I typically use a step bit. But this time I'm going to use these Diablo uh, spade or paddle bits. I've always called them paddle bits. Some folks call them uh, spade bits. But these are 5 eighths, and that's pretty close to the size of that SO239. So I'll drill, drill a pilot hole, and then I'll use these to flush it out. Okay, and uh, here we go. You can see just ever so slightly crooked. I did my best, but uh, this is going to have to do. And I have these mounted in here with four M3, I guess you call that a hex bolt. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, this should work just fine. So the next thing I want to do is I want to drill the holes for these quarter 20 bolts up on the top part of that. So I'm going to go take care of that and I'm going to come back when I'm done. Okay, and that was easy enough. So here you can see the quarter 20s and I got two of them. They're a little bit close. So you're just going to need to be careful or I'm going to need to be careful that I don't have these wing nuts touching. So these will be bolted in. You can see the bolts here, but the wing nuts are so I can quickly add or remove uh, the twin line that I'm going to be using. Now, that said, I could just use bolts and not wing nuts, but I like wing nuts because I think they're cool. So the next thing we want to do is we want to get our platform frame mounted in there. And uh, this is going to be a little bit tricky because once I screw that down, it's going to be very difficult to mount our toroid. Now, the thing is, is that I can't mount the toroid to the frame beforehand because then I can't reach the screws to mount this in the box. So what I came up with is using some of my favorite things, zip ties. And what we're going to do is put one in like this and then have it come through on the other side. And then I'm going to replicate. So let's just do this. And I got the buttery fingers going. And what I want to do now is make sure that this is nice. Oop, put it in the wrong one. Let me go ahead and get that fixed. And what I want to do is I want to make sure this is flat as possible. So it's not going to mess up mounting the platform in there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to screw this platform in. And I'm probably going to do it off camera because there's going to be some cussing involved but I should be able to get it in there just fine. So we'll be right back. Okay, I'm not 100% sure where we left off, but here we are, we have the plate mounted, it's screwed in, we have our zip ties in place. And then what I wanna do is I wanna take this and I wanna mount it in there. And I did make some changes to the last time you saw this, I put these O-rings on here, crimped and soldered them, and I put one here, crimped and soldered. I didn't for this one, um, what I did is extend this piece a little bit and I want to solder this into this SO239 center pin conductor. <clears throat> and if you look, I mounted it so the cup is up and that will make soldering in there a little bit easier. So let me go ahead and place this in and we'll take a look and see where we're at. <clears throat> so as I do this, the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that this eye ring gets onto this particular post. And we have that. And then I'm going to take these out and I'm going to get these situated and I'll be right back. All right, so we're starting to make some progress here. So let's take a look. I have these two mounted to the quarter 20 bolts. You can see them in there. And that is tightened up pretty tight. And then I just have these wing nuts on here, which are finger loose. And like I mentioned, they're for connecting the twin line. On this side, you can see that I have the ground or the shield side connected into this bolt right here. I put an extra washer in there and it seems to be on there pretty good. Now that center pin is not soldered in. So I'm going to do that now and then we're going to come back. We're going to tighten up these clamps and we'll talk a little bit about what we've done. 
All right, I have that uh, that pin soldered in. I don't know if you can see it there or not, but I feel pretty good about that. Let me go ahead and we're going to cinch down these zip ties. And this is just to hold everything in here secure and steady. <laughs> Look at that. I got it in there backwards. It's not going to lock. This is in here pretty good. <laughs> so we've got a little bit of a problem here. That's going to be a difficult thing to fix. Let's just go ahead and yank those out. But uh, we're in here pretty good. It's a, it's a tight fit. So I'm going to say that sucks. I really wanted to use those zip ties to hold the core down, but I don't think it's absolutely necessary. So I messed up a little bit there, but uh, at the end of the day, this is the choke that we're going to use for our doublet antenna. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thank you for watching.